In this video, we're going to see how to use Niacin's augmentation functions inside of PyTorch data loaders. Now, let's imagine that I have some text that looks like this. It says, they were praying for jail, but I mastered the pen. And we would like to use this as a data point in fitting a machine learning model. Now, we know that an important training strategy to use if we want our models to be both accurate and robust is to apply augmenting transformations to the input. An augmenting transformation is one which modifies the underlying data without changing the semantic value of that data. To see a concrete example of this, we can look at the add applause function from Niacin. What this function does is replace spaces in between words with the clapping hands emoji. What we have done here is we've modified the input data without changing the semantic contents of this to any native English speaker. Now, in practice, when we're fitting our machine learning models, we don't want to only apply one transformation function or just the small number of transformation functions. Ideally, every piece of input, I would see a variety of transformations that are applied to it in more or less a random order. There is an algorithm for doing exactly this called RAND augment uh, that accepts as input uh, a global list of all of the available transformation functions you would like to see considered when fitting your model. And at each iteration, we'll select a random subset of these to apply to your input. In the example that we have here, we've imported an implementation of the RAND augment algorithm from inside of Niacin, and we have initialized it with three augmentation functions. Swapping out words for a synonym, swapping out words for a hypernym, this is a higher level category, uh, but has the same sort of general meaning, uh, and swapping the order of words uh, within an individual input. We can execute this against that same text we were looking at before, and it says uh, they were praying for pokey, um, Sorry, they were praying butt pokey, I mastered the pen. Uh, so this must be a colloquial word for jail that I haven't heard before. Uh, and we see from the positioning of the word but here uh, that we have also changed the ordering of the words inside of the sentence. Now, if I were to run this over several epochs, um, I would be feeding many different combinations uh, of these kinds of transformations to the input. And instead of pen, for example, you might see something like writing instrument. And this helps me make a more accurate uh, and a more robust model. Now, we've been working with text held in just a uh, Python string here in memory, um, but typically we work with something called a data loader uh, when we're fitting our models. So in particular, we rely on the data loader um, to fetch our training data and labels for us, especially when we have data sets that don't all fit in memory at the same time. To enable the use of augmenting transforms um, inside of the Torch text ecosystem, Niacin now provides a set of compatibility classes uh, that provide data sets that are Torch text-like, um, but also accept either a sequence of static transformations as input um, or an augmenter class like the Rand augment class that we saw before. So from Niacin, we can, for example, import a memory text data set. Uh, we can make an instance of this with that same text example we saw before, uh, and we can give it our RAND augment algorithm as a set of transformations we would like to see applied. Then for some range of epochs, uh, we can iterate over the set of data and labels in this loader, although there's only one in this case, uh, and we can look at the tensors that are being output um, by, by this loader class. Uh, what you'll see here um, from the sort of differing numbers uh, is that again, we're swapping the order of some of our inputs, uh, and in some cases, our augmentation algorithm is generating vocabulary words uh, that exist outside of our model's vocabulary. Uh, so they're being replaced here with the unknown token. Now, in this case, we've initialized a dataset class, again, using just something that we had in memory. Um, nice and also provides utilities to have dataset classes that are defined on disk. So for example, I might have my text data contained in a single file nearby called superimportantdata.csv. We can create a data set using the file text data set class from Niacin. 
um, again, passing in the RAND augment. Uh, augmenting class is our list of transforms. Uh, and when we read our data and labels, then in this case, uh, we see those transformations again, random subsets of them um, applied to the outputs of this um, returned to us as PyTorch tensors.